Now you can actually hear us. And let me turn off my mute there on that one. So, hi, welcome to Learning to Flight. We're on flight number 63. We're going to Chile. Let me grab our friend Anthony and add him into our stream. And we are in Chile and we have Anthony. Hello, Anthony. <laughs> hey Jess, how are you? How are you? I can't hear you, but maybe maybe you can. I've got my sound down, so maybe that's why. Can you hear me okay? All right, if you all are bearing with us, I apologize. I don't know why my my sound is not up. It's so strange. All right. In I can't hear you. Anthony, can you hear us? I can. You can. Okay. So for some reason, it's just my phone, my speaker. That's not. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to get going. We're going to get started. And, um, and I'll just watch Anthony's lips move, but I can't really hear him. So I don't know. It's kind of strange. Um, so you so can not hear me? Um, hmm. I don't know Jeff, why. Can you hear me now? Your sound off? Huh? No, my sound is on. It's just that it's saying volume is at five, but I don't know why yeah, my volume sure, is sure. at five. Can you hear me? Sure, I'm sorry about this, guys. <laughs> can you turn it off? Buttons up there? Keyboard. Yeah, I, that's what I'm trying to do, and it's just stuck at five, the number five. A, so I don't know how to get beyond that. Did you check the on and off? Okay, so we're gonna just keep on going, and um, and and I'm hoping that that you all can hear us. Sarah, can you do me a huge favor? I'm checking. Yeah, can you check on Facebook and see if we can hear Anthony? Yeah. Can Anthony, can you talk so we can see if we can hear you? Yes, hello, hello. Hello. You can see his, his mouth. You can hear him? Yeah. Okay. You can hear me. All okay, right, great. So we can hear you. I just can't hear you on my laptop, Anthony. Um, but we okay. probably don't want the reverb of that anyways since I'm our film person tonight. So I apologize, this is not what I do on a regular basis. When you guys get to me, it's because we don't have Tom because he's in Vegas this week. So, and um, yeah, and we're doing things remote. We're still here in COVID land of America, home of the free. And <laughs> we do what we can as safely as possible, which means we drink a lot of wine together. So. <laughs> We are going to Chile tonight. We have Anthony with us, and he is um, he is with uh, Chateau Saint Michel and Antonori. And Antonori is the purchased the property of um, of Paras de Perk back in I want to say two thousand and one or something uh, like that. Two thousand seventeen when we actually purchased the property, but we've been working with them since two thousand and one. <laughs> oh, you can't hear me. Sorry. This is going to be fun. It'll be a joint venture between two families, the Antonori family out of Italy and the Mate family from Chile. It's, it's feedback, so it's giving me feedback. Oh. That's the problem. Jeff, uh, can you hear me, Jess? Great, you put it on the table. And of course, wine. Let's just pour wine while yeah. he's talking about it. <laughs> All right. Technology. I know. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so, unfortunately, if I if I turn our sound on, we can't. We're getting 
I have advice from somebody who's watching the play. Yay. If you stick an ear plug in to your device, you'll be able to hear me, Anthony. I had an earplug, but the problem that I have, then yeah, how about we just not use the microphones? Let's try not use this. Yeah. And then maybe that will work. And you just need to be loud. I think we're, we found that they're We'll see. We're going to have to have, we're going to try and not to do the mic with Raymond. And, yeah. Because now I can have sound. And now I can hear you. All right. So that's all we need to do. Right. Yeah. And hopefully that will work. Yeah, and you can sell your us, right? Okay. Thank you for the idea. Thank you. Thank you for right. helping. <laughs> uh, so let us over here, yeah. right? What about putting headphones into your phone and listening to the audio phone? Huh? I'm going to try a bunch of different things and do this. Do you need kind of headphones? Uh, no, I'm going to do it this way. Because we're, we're good. We, oh, we don't want to waste any more time on this. Mm -hmm. We just want to get to drinking wine and eating some cheese and talking and hanging out with Anthony. So, <laughs> All right. So, Anthony, do you want to play us this video? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. If you want to mute you guys as well, just for any ambient noise there, it might help. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Yay. Yeah, so I don't know where Anthony went, though. <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> so in the meantime, <laughs> this is just a folly. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me let him back in. <laughs> Uh, technology is not our friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start. Let's start talking about wine. Let's talk about Chile, and let's talk about uh, Harasta Pirque. So, yes. I'll give a little overview of of the estate and where we are geographically, and and who we're dealing with here. So, uh, first and foremost, my name is Anthony. I'm the state manager in Florida for the Antonori family, um, and I work for Saint Michelle Wine Estates, who imports Antonori into uh, into America. So. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for joining. And thank you, Jess and Raymond, for having me. Uh, <laughs> I do these about, what, four or five times a year now? Yep. So it's yep. always fun. Uh, it's always way more fun when I'm eating the, the cheese and drinking the wine with you. But today, I, I do have the wine, just not the cheese. Good. <laughs> um, so we are in Chile. And the year is 2001, when the 26th generation Antonori family out of Italy um, was paying a visit to Chile and the Maipo Andes Mountains and realized, uh, just basically fell in love with, with what they do there and, and the terroir and what we're able to do there and when it comes to winemaking. Um, we are inland in Chile, so we're kind of bordering Argentina, but if you look at our, uh, Chile, it's just kind of a very thin strip on the, the west coast of South America. So when we say we're inland, it's not by, by very much. So uh, 2001, Piero Antonori, traveled down to Chile, met the Mate family. Uh, and the Mate family, I think even to date, it is one of the most successful families out of Chile. Um, they own the largest pulp and paper company in South America. And they shared an appreciation for two uh, very beautiful delicacies, and that is uh, thoroughbred horses and wine. So on Piero Antonori's journey down to Chile, he decided to or the two families decided to join together and produce a wine, uh, a, a joint venture called Albus, which is um, going to be, it's our flagship wine from the estate. We don't have it today because we wanted to keep the, the tasting and the cost on, on par with you know the, uh, the cost for these. So it would have offset the cost a little bit, but if anyone's interested in 
purchasing the wine or trying the wine, get with Jess and I can definitely bring a, a sample over there for you uh, to taste or we can organize something. But 2001, that's where it all began. They've produced one wine called Albus, which I have right here I can show you. And this is 81% this is uh, Cabernet Sauvignon and 19% Carmenere. So this is a wine that uh, we only produce in exceptional vintages. It's a wine that started it all down in uh, at Harasta Pirque in Chile. And from there, Antonori took over the winemaking responsibilities in 2014 mm -hmm. and bought the, pro the property outright in 2017. Um, we do have a female winemaker. And now we also have females uh, as the 26th generation running the company, the three daughters of Piero. So we're very proud to be a female ran um, organization or, or family owned business. And um, Cecilia is a great winemaker as well. So we, we really are proud of her to, to have her on board as, as our female winemaker. A couple things to point out. And if I can share my screen, Jess, yeah. just for some, yeah. some imagery. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Should be able to. Yeah. Is that working? Yep. All right. So just for some images, you know, you can kind of see where we're at. We're at the foothills of the, the Maipo Andy Mountains. We're about 500 to 800 meters above sea level. So call it 1500 to 2100 feet above sea level. So we see a little bit more sun exposure. We sit typically above the fog line. So we're seeing um, more warmth or more, more sun, but cooler temperatures as well. And yes. a huge diurnal shift. So we're getting um, the difference between, you know, the, the peak heat of the day and the cool breeze at night is, you know, sometimes very drastic, which is helping us ripen grapes. So um, here's a little, if you can still see my screen, you can see where we're at in Chile. It looks And we're just about 30 kilometers south of the capital, Santiago. For me, Anthony, on my screen, I see your, your shared StreamYard screen. Oh, okay, hold on. So I've not seen the, the mountains. All right, hold on. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Okay, hold on one second. <laughs> we're going to do one of these. Jess and I are going to practice one of these just for technology. All right, seriously, we're going to get so good at this. <laughs> All right, here we go. How's that? Let me let you back in. There we go. All right. It's much better. So here we are. <laughs> and again, showing you the map here on the, on the, we're in Chile, we're right about, let's see, right about here. And you can see right here where the dots are. So Santiago is the capital, Pirque is, is the region where we're at, just south, about uh, 30 kilometers south. The winery is in the shape of a horseshoe. Uh, one thing that we're very, very proud of is that we are an extremely environmentally sustainable winery and we are certified organic as of 2016. Um, that is for all the production of red wines. We only grow red grapes on the estate. We do uh, source a small amount of Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, which we're enjoying tonight. Um, and that's just because really where we are geographically, this is a region that has this um, loam, like really great clay soil. And that's best for the production of Cabernet Sauvignon, Carmenere, and Cabernet Franc. Um, when it comes to the white wine, Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc, we're sourcing that from um, family friends out in Casablanca Valley and Leda Valley because we're closer to the coast there and we're going to see a lot more minerality and that's really where these grapes thrive is more coastal Appalachians. Um, as I said, we're, we are certified organic as of 2016. We began that process in 2006. So that's something that took quite some time, 10 years, but that's really not the longest I've heard. Um, we are certified organic. We do measure our carbon footprint and we are kind of leading sustainability down there right now. So I'll click this real fast and jump to the wines. So the first wine we're gonna to enjoy tonight, which should be in your glass now, correct Jess? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, oops, that went away. This is the Alba Clara Sauvignon Blanc. 
Ava Clara is, uh, it comes from clear dawn, and that's kind of just speaking to the, you know, the beautiful sun that we see, you know, in the sunrises in the vineyards. Um, Chilean wines, for those of you that are not too familiar, they're some of the best value driven wines you can find. In my opinion, you're, these are wines with character, wines with soul. Um, they check a lot of the boxes for the wines that we are used to drinking. Let's call it, you know, let's compare this Sauvignon Blanc to a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. The New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc is going to be much more rich with grapefruit and more strong in the citrus notes. This has some really nice citrus notes, but we get extreme minerality. And to me, a little bit of, and I say this in a very good way, but uh, herbal and and kind of like a funkiness going on in the wine, which I really love. I, I get a lot of jalapeno, um, kind of like, you know, carve out the seeds and just the actual jalapeno. Um, and, and some good herbaceousness in the wine, which to me pairs perfectly with food. Whereas if I'm enjoying that New Zealand style Sauvignon Blanc, I can't really go back and forth between food and cheese and grapefruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch your screen off and put Raymond back on. Oh, was that not on? No, it was on that one. So um, so I'm gonna let Raymond talk about the cheese that he's paired now okay, so um, with the wine. So this pair. is our wine. What we paired with uh, the number one cheese is a uh, uh, uh out of Seattle, Washington. It's uh, it's a uh, like a Flagship, flagship cheddar, yep. and it's uh, it's uh, one of the main cheddar they make there. It's it's a walnut cheddar. It's uh, it's aged for uh, I think 15, 19 months. It has a nice creamy flavor from from the walnut, but it also has a nice uh, uh, sharpness to it. Uh, not 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 to the point where it really dries your mouth. But it, it goes real nice with the wine. Which I think that that herbal and asparagus taste in the wine is uh, is kind of very complementary with the, very much so. with the cheese. Uh, I put some honey too if some of you want to try cheddar. Honey usually goes nicely together, mm -hmm. and it'll bring a little sweetness to to the wine too. But uh, yeah, it's I mean it's made in Seattle. It's very very uh, in demand. I mean everybody. All over the state seem to know that cheese, and it's a real nice, nice cheddar. Uh, I like to carry that because it's it's not too sharp, and it's really a good, good product. And we have the little water of that one also, which is the Marco Polo, which has green peppercorn and black peppercorn, which is nice with some more, maybe with some red wine because of the spice to it. So uh, those are. Two, two cheese I'm very really like to pay and use on our cheese board. So it's a real good product. Definitely. <laughs> You're back on screen. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, unfortunately, you don't have any cheese with you. <laughs> right, that's okay. I probably have some at home. It's, it's nowhere near as good as, uh, as what you guys are serving over there. So, <laughs> right. So, um, you have to stop down afterwards. Um, no, I think that, I was just going to say, I think the wine is, this is one of my favorite wines. This is um, something that just has a lot of character, a lot of soul, and is, is very different than what we're used to drinking. And, you know, like I, like I said earlier, and we'll kind of get into this more when we go to the red wines, but these are of exceptional value. I mean, Jess, what do you serve, what do you sell this for, as for the bottle? Uh, $17.99, I believe. So under $20, and it's a wine that just, I think it's, it's very unique. Yep. Yeah, I, for me, it's nice and balanced with the citrus and the savory. It's not, um, you know, I just had some Sauvignon Blancs, one from Australia or from New Zealand, I mean, and one from um, France, and they were very different than, than this one. Um, they definitely, like, the New Zealand was, like, straight up grapefruit, you know, whereas the French one was grapefruit with some citrus and some limestone, but to me, like, this is more citrus some a hint of grapefruit and then a, a nice savory component to it that i think balances out that citrusiness and it makes it juicy in a pleasant way and to me that's what makes this a better food wine than a lot of the new zealand Sauvignon blancs the so, the the and we are we are amazing aging the the wine. 
Mm -hmm. Both of the white wines are aged on the lees. So the, the skin is the, the, the grape and the, the yeast cells. Um, so it, that's where we're getting a little bit of that savory, that texture and that mouthfeel, a little bit more richness than you're used to out of New Zealand, yeah. uh, which is more of a French technique for sure. Um, and, you know, another big thing that I will say is that we have an Italian family here producing these wines and we, we work very hard to not change Chile into Italy. Yeah. Because, you know, it's, it's very common to see an American winemaker go buy land somewhere else and make this American style or vice versa. And one thing that our, our winemaking team, Renzo Cortarella uh, and, and Cecilia, is that they want to keep it very indigenous stylistically to Chile. Mm -hmm. it's, so can I try and play the video that I have? Yeah, go for it, please. Okay, I'm going to try because they actually specifically talk about this. And I just thought it was a great video. Um, and I'm going to try. I, I'm hoping that it will work. We'll see. Um, we shall see. Going off of our uh, technology, I don't know if it will, but I really hope it does. Seriously. Mm -hmm. I just thought that I got back in. We'll try this. Yeah, it's a video of them, um, it, and it's just they. I mean, they do a, such a good job, in my opinion, um, with their the film making, and just you know, they do a good job with their wines. Obviously, um, I don't know why it's not showing up. Well, I, I guess I won't show the video <laughs> because. Well, actually, wait. I will try and do it this way. If I can do my share screen, right? Share screen. And I'm going to share my screen. And then I'm going to go to this one here. And let's play this video. So the adventure here in uh, Chile started at the beginning of the uh, year 2000. After a few years, we really um, more and more fell in love with this area. This estate really represents us for equality and for a potential of uh, development of quality wines in time, exactly what we're looking for. Aras de Finca is really a unique place uh, that is able to produce wine with a lot of um, vibrancy, uh, longer, with more minerality and never so massive, but always elegant and with grain. The place is able to, say, to give to the wine uh, really uh, a great authenticity. Of course, the variety we have here, the classic variety we have in Chile, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, and of course, Carmenere. And we produce different wines, but all with this kind of approach. I don't say we want to bring here an European touch, because I think Chile is really a great country to produce wine. We want to produce Chilean wines. But the place, as I said before, is really a place where you can have wine slightly different than others, because it's not too warm. It has a wonderful night, it means fresh, and is able to maintain the real fruit, dark, black, but with this touch of vibrancy that makes the wine really unique. Jess, so I could not see the video on my screen. I don't know. If oh, that's viewers. so sad. For the viewers. So just watch. You guys just got to listen to us. Okay, let me see if I can do this again. Are you kidding me? <laughs> in the meantime, yeah. So the adventure here in uh, Chile started at the beginning of the uh, year 2000. After a few years, we really um, more and more fell in love with this area. 
this estate really represents us for equality and for potential of uh, development quality wines in time exactly what we're looking for. Aras de Finca is really a unique place uh, that is able to produce wine with a lot of uh, uh, vibrancy, uh, longer, with more minerality, and never so massive, but always elegant and great. The place is able to, say, to give to the wine uh, really uh, a great authenticity. Of course, the variety we have here are the classic variety we have in Chile, Cabernet, Cabernet Franc, and of course, Carmenere. And we produce different wines, but all with this kind of approach. Yeah. I don't say we want to bring here an European touch, because I think Chile is really a great country to produce wine. We want to produce Chilean wines. But the place, as I said before, is really a place where you can have wine slightly different than others, because it's not too warm. It has a wonderful night, it means fresh, and is able to maintain the real fruit, dark, black, but with this touch of vibrancy that makes the wine really unique. So did you see it now? Yes. Yes. We were able to see at that time. Yay! Finally, one thing worked for us tonight <laughs> so far. That and we have you here at least. <laughs> we got you to one stream. One of the cool things as well about this is that uh, everything is everything is handpicked. So when we talk about these, you know, seventeen ninety nine bottle of Sauvignon Blanc or a twenty dollar bottle of Cabernet, we're talking handpicked organic fruit, which is very hard to find uh, elsewhere other than Chile. Um, and again, we'll touch on that when we, you know, the, the value when we move into the, the red wines. But um, I believe I saw you pouring the Chardonnay, correct? We are. We're on to number right. two. Yeah. We just took the liberty while we were watching that video and poured ourselves a glass. We suggest you do the same if you have not already. <laughs> so the Chardonnay uh, is, is, to me, another kind of spot on with the Sauvignon Blanc where it's very different. Here, I think we see more minerality, more tart fruit. Uh, really good citrus notes and a little bit of honey or honeysuckle. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of, uh, on the palate, I get a little bit more of that like unripe banana and like tart banana, if you will, or, you know, yeah. I compare it to um, the candy, like banana runts almost, a little bit yeah. like that. <laughs> not, not like soft, you know, perfectly ripened banana, but just a little bit underripe and kind mm -hmm. of green. Um, we take a small amount of the wine and we're, we're actually aging it in barrel uh, or fermenting in barrel, but most of the wine is in stainless steel fermentation and aging. So you you kind of lack, and, and to me in a good way, I think to all of us in Florida in a good way, you lack the the butter and it's replaced with these like nice honey notes and um, you still have the richness, you still have great mouthfeel, but it's great citrus, honey, and a little bit of that like tart banana to me. Mm -hmm. Well, at the same time being very fresh as well. So to add a little bit to that, today you're not here, but we we fed it with uh, Saffron's sap Grow, Grow Cheese, uh, which is a Sergeant Pepper, which is made in California. It's a, it's a shell kind of Grow Cheese, and he has, it, it has been flavored with uh, Cayenne, Arisa, and it you know, will bring a little spice to that. Uh, that backup sweetness of the mm -hmm. of the food I see in the wine, and should should really uh, give a little bit of a, a punch to the wine. It does, and and I think it's it's would be a good pairing for the for that Chardonnay, which is not a usual Chardonnay at all. So it's I think it's a real nice mix. Uh, like I said, it's made by Sapphire Gold. They make uh, quite a few different flavored goat cheese. Uh, we we got a couple of them here. They also make some uh, age goat cheese, they are, I guess they are out of California. And they are one of the best, best uh, goat cheese flavor in, in the United States, to my taste. Uh, they are one of the better ones. So- Yeah, I can only imagine, Raymond, the, the acidity in, in the goat cheese with the nice acid and minerality in the wine right now, it just, it has to, really result in a, in a great finish and a, and a great marriage between the two. It's also nice to have that, you actually, that little bit of spice in the cheese get, does get picked up on in the wine and it does pop the wine out, in my opinion, because 
it pops the acidity actually out and the minerality in it more. Um, it makes both of those things come alive, in my opinion. Yeah, but you still have the creaminess of the green cheese, so it's nice. Yeah, but it pops it. There's like Speaking to texture, we're getting we're still allowing a short period of lees aging and lees okay. contact before before going to bottles. So we're still seeing that kind of savory richness, but at the front we get all that, you know, that good citrus, the tart fruit, and a little bit of that minerality. Mm-hmm. So do you guys have guests in house tonight as well? We or do. is it Yes, we do. Cool. We have we have Desiree and Angie and Alex. And Alex. Desiree and Alex tonight. Very cool. Guests as well. And then we also have some guests joining us virtually as well on Facebook. Um, I did see that Tom did say happy wine Wednesday from Vegas. So hello, Tom. <laughs> Tom's with us even when he's not. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, I look forward to him really learning StreamYard. <laughs> All the fun. There's a, there's a lot of fun to to it though, but I just need to uh, I need to learn it better when I he's not here. So, but yeah, we are enjoying um, we're enjoying the pairings and we we enjoy. So this is a this is a wine that we've tasted a lot of these wines with Anthony over the last couple of years, and we always go back to this winery. I feel like mm-hmm. because it's just they do good, a good solid job of making wine. So. Yeah, and they have, they have uh, their own personality. They do. Their yeah, they're 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 very distinct. It's not, it's not very French, it's not an Italian. It's a Chilean. Yeah, it. it's very very different. It's uh, where you get that true yeah. terroir driven, not just saying it, but you could actually. East Definitely. And and when we come when it comes down to price point to quality, oh. you know, I always say like to find a wine of this quality or the set or especially when we get into the reds, uh, yeah. in my opinion, to find yeah. wines of that quality that are hand picked organic fruit from let's say the New World or France, even or Italy, really. Um, we're talking dramatic probably fifty percent less on the shelf than than what we're dealing with here today. Yeah. So I'll, I'll start talking a little bit about the reds and um, and kind of the red grape because that's what we do on the estate. Okay. That's what we grow on the estate. Um, but we can switch with our glasses, so we can pour our red too. So Carbonier is obviously the indigenous, you know, not indigenous part of me. It's it's the grape that that Chile is known for the most, um, and it was indigenous to Bordeaux, France. And really, it wasn't until the '90s when they thought this grape just kind of disappeared due to phylloxera um, that it was rediscovered in Chile in the 90s. And that's really what started gaining international recognition and global recognition back to Chile in the 90s was the rediscovery and the rebirth of Carmenere. Um, we're going to have some Carmenere in both of these wines. There's a small amount in the Husine. There's about uh, 25% in the, the Reserva de Propriedad, so the red blend. Um, but it wasn't until the 90s when they rediscovered Carmenere in Chile, outside of Bordeaux, France, that people realized that uh, they call it the lost grape of Bordeaux. So the Bordeaux varieties, we have Cab, Cab Franc, Merlot, Malbec, Petit Bordeaux. And this would be the sixth you know, that they say is the lost grape of Bordeaux. But it was found in Chile in the 90s. And that's when winemakers and tourists and wine drinkers all started navigating to Chile. And it's one of those things where really we're, we're starting to see at this time more and more people gravitate by land. And, um, and today we've still held on to a tremendous value in the wines and um, probably the land not so much. I'm sure land's gotten a little bit expensive now that everyone's recognizing Chilean wines again. So I would say pre 1990s, it was mostly Chilean individuals who were enjoying their wines. So we'll move into the uh, the reds. Um, the Reserva de Propiedad is our proprietary red blend on the estate. Um, it leads with Cabernet Sauvignon. We have about 65% Cabernet Sauvignon. We have uh, 25% um, Carmenere. And then the rest of the blend, around 10%, is uh, Cabernet Franc. And this is a wine that's aged for about six to eight months in French oak, uh, smaller barrel. And here, I think we we really show the terroir. 
Um, we get a little bit on the earthy side. We get um, the Carmenere really shines through, which if you're not used to drinking Carmenere, I think this could be um, new or, you know, a, a very unique experience for your palate. But it's it's definitely has some some funk. And I use that word uh, with all with all respect and and excitement, really, because I love the the, the funkiness and the, the earthiness in the wine. Um, this to me, out of all of the reds we produce on the estate, to me, this is the most old world style wine we produce. It's real juicy and cold. So, to, to, to pair with that beautiful carmen in wine, uh, we have um, a cheese out of Spain. So it's uh, it's a goat cheese. It's similar to um, you'll be finding it easy in the kit because it's got that red wine on it, like the red wine we're drinking. Uh, it's because the cheese, when it's made, is uh, soaked in red wine. They actually uh, uh, put some holes in the cheese so the wine can also get in the inside. That's why it looks a little bit like marble. And, and it's it's soaked in red wine for a couple of weeks, so it's developed that that wine on the outside, which is kind of purple. They also developed that wine taste, just Spanish wine. Um, it's made in the area near Murcia, so they they soak the cheese for like I say two weeks, and then it, it just ages in uh, in the creamery. Uh, it's a it's a goat cheese, so it has a very uh, goat milk is a lot creamier in a way than, than a, a cow milk or sheep milk. So it's got that, that creaminess into it, but it also has a little bit of that funkiness from the goat yeah. milk. So uh, I think it'd be a, this wine being kind of funky, it's got a nice <laughs> bit of funky mm -hmm. cheese to go with yeah, it. Master. And, yeah. and, so I hope you enjoy the cheese. Uh, it's called uh, Vino de Cabra, which means uh, wine and goat, basically <laughs> wine from the goat. So yep. uh, it's it's very similar to uh, to Drunken Goat, uh, which which we've carried before. But Drunken Goat is just soaked in the cheese. I mean, in the wine, but yeah. it's not it's not infiltrated with the wine. So you only get that flavor on the wine, but not through the cheese. So uh, that's why we brought this one in because there's a little more of the wine flavor imparted to it. So uh, we carry it here. So if, if you cannot find it, you can find it here always. <laughs> so to, to the guests that are, that are actually in house, because I, I can see a response there. I don't really see anyone else that's streaming, but um, <laughs> What are, your, what are your thoughts on the wine? And, and I don't, again, like, I don't mean funky in a bad way at all. I just mean earthy. I guess that's really the word I, I should be using. No, we were trying to look for the word. Because we're like, there's like a little. I always call it like garik, you know, <laughs> like that cellar, that musty cellar kind yeah, of. That's a good one. Like that you're not quite sure, but it just, it kind of like brings you to that musty cellar. If you've ever been to an older winery <laughs> yeah. and once you've gone once it, I feel like you then get that smell and you can't get loose of that smell and that to me is kind of like what these all have so that's what they were saying is I don't know if you could hear them Anthony I could yeah yeah okay good thank you right. well, it's good to get feedback you know these were we have to the virtual things we have to learn how to uh yeah. stare at ourselves <laughs> talk to for an hour and a half you know so, yeah. so I wanted to put this out. I think I think seeing the the bottle is very important for for everyone at home drinking, or for even for you guys, you know. So the next time you're at Must, and if you like the wine, you can obviously go in and grab a bottle. But um, I again, I, I a couple things to highlight here is that this is these are the three red varieties that we that we are three of yeah these are the three red varieties we produce on the estate. Um, so you would call this the house red, and what I mean by that is just literally. We produce three red grapes on the estate, and they are in this bottle. Um, and that, that's kind of our. And again, for seventeen, eighteen dollars, I think that there's quality here that's really um, hard to find elsewhere. And then the, for me, the cheese 
has a little bit of a sweetness to it mm -hmm. that you get right before you taste the wine mm -hmm. and then you taste the wine and it actually it makes the cheese savory and pops out the savory notes of the wine i thought I so which was interesting i wasn't expecting that i was i was thinking it was actually going to bring the wine out of the cheese more and then it didn't it would see kind of like the reverse where it's more like the, the cheese brought the wine out of right. the wine <laughs> And I will, the, uh, the carbonara and the, the Cab Franc have some spice they going do. on in the glass. So, yeah, so it's, you know, right. without without food, right. and I can testify because I'm here without food, but um, right. it definitely has, like, some good spice, which, you know, again, why I say old world, I think, like, it has that similar spice to, like, a Chianti Classico. Yeah. Without, obviously, it's we're talking Cabernet, so we're a little bit more on the meaty side. Oh, but um, I can imagine with a good cheese, it'll, ta it'll tame that spice. Yeah. Tony doesn't know, but we also have some nice French olives with that, which has a lot of <laughs> hardness to that. Yeah. And then add to the pepper, pepper, mm -hmm. the pepper flavor and mm -hmm. vegetables. Awesome. Or, uh, and they go really well with the, with this particular wine. Mm -hmm. The reserve definitely, like the house, that, that, that this is definitely goes great with the olives. It's my finger this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As opposed to any other time. <laughs> what you don't see. <laughs> no, but this is so delicious. When we get to this, um, this herbaceousness and this vegetal um, structure and characteristic in these wines, starting with the Sauvignon Blanc and especially in the Houssonne, our mm -hmm. Grand Reserve of Cabernet, which we'll move into, um, we are, the property in, in this region is heavily planted with myrtle. So these myrtle trees are, are really giving a balsamic character to the to the soil um, if you think about it this, these have been planted there for hundreds of years and obviously it's you know it's kind of regeneration and it's it's really giving back to the soil as well um, and that's kind of what we're seeing in the wine here is that we're going to get this really strong herbaceousness and um, green balsamic note in the wines and I think you'll definitely be able to pull that out when we get into the the Cabernet yeah. The olives go spot on with this one. Yeah, I think yeah. definitely. Yeah. This is definitely an, um yeah, I think that I think I like the the olive because he put an olive on my you what you couldn't see behind the bottle was that he was he was handing me an olive to try the olive the herb olives with this particular wine and it, it just is fantastic pairing together. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mary, Mary just commented that she loves the red and the goose. Olives are better. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the olives yeah, I do too. <laughs> Again, without, without stopping down to must, I would be having like, you know, some, some American slight uh, craft cheddar and I'd have some black <laughs> olives in a can. So I don't really want to go there at home. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite I'm kidding. I don't have either of those things up here. But, um, <laughs> so, um, we just went into the 2016. Yeah, I was going to say that too. That this is a 2016, folks. Just so you know. Right. So, and, and that's that's a big thing to to call out here is that we are on the southern hemisphere. Yeah. So when we say 2018 harvest. Right. Or, you know, uh, let's just say this. Let's use what we're in right now. If it was 2021 harvest, we would be rolling into it right now um, in north in the northern hemisphere. So right. we already are. Yeah, yeah. In California, they are. Right. Yeah. We're and in Italy. We're already in harvest and in France. I mean, yeah. In, and in the southern hemisphere, everything's the seasons are changed. Right. It's switched. Right. So we would harvest usually around March. So okay. it's funny because, you know, we'll, we'll we get an extra. I don't know. I mean, really, we're seeing an extra six months in bottle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when we're seeing 2016, know that the grapes are not harvested in September, October, November. They're they're harvested in March, April, rather. Exactly. As the beginning of the year, not at the right. end of the year, which we're used to here. So it is. It's in, it's really I, nice for the winemakers, I'm sure, and the winemaking team, just because, you know, you get it all out of the way in the beginning, and then you have summer just to... I feel like the Southern Hemisphere also like kind of sets the tone for the harvest for the year for right. maybe, maybe, I don't know if it's exactly the same. I'm not a winemaker and I'm not somebody who studies the earth. So I don't know. Actually, you know right. 
So if you're looking at like a graph, let's say, and you're looking at the, the climate and the, the warmth, I'm sure that. It's also kind of cool for the winemaker that they have. That travel. This is why they and travel and they do both yeah. hemispheres. Because they can do, they can do the wine they in do. the spring up yeah. there, then they come back yeah. in the fall and do wine right. up here. Yeah. Or in France or. That's what they do. A lot of them anyways. <laughs> do, do your winemakers here do that? Do they travel? Uh, so, so, so Cecilia will, will be there. Uh, she's there full time. Renzo Cortarella, he's our enologist for the family. So he is our, you know, our head winemaker. He leads winemaking and oversees the program. So really we're, um, it's great. It works out very nice for him because we produce out of 18 different estates globally. So um, this is our only property in the Southern hemisphere. So it allows him to be there for harvest and and to to really have a hands-on approach um and then get back for you know for the italian harvest or napa valley or so yeah yeah and we just rolled into the 2016 Houston a uh, which will be the next wine um no rush but i just want to talk about it a little bit um this was a this is a very you know aside from albus which is the flagship wine on the estate um, Houssonet is a very special wine for us because 20, uh, 2015 vintage, so the last vintage, was number 62 out of top uh, 100 wine spectator. And we're talking about a you know 15 to 20 dollar bottle of wine on a shelf being certified organic and um, Grand Reserva Cabernet number 62 out of top 100 wine spectator. Just moved into the 2016 vintage, which is 94 points again. For that price point, 94 point wine for under $20 or around $20 is very hard to find anywhere else. Um, and to me, this defines Chilean Cabernet like no other. It's It's got this beautiful nose. It has um, a lot of red fruit, a lot of black fruit. And then we see a little bit of this herbaceousness, that same jalapeno that jumped out at the Alba Clara Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but then on the palate, you get this rich velvet and this really beautiful texture uh, and weight to the wine that I that I really admire. It's um, to me on the palate, the weight of the wine reminds me of drinking like Washington Cabernet, mm -hmm. where it has this very velvety, like soft feeling and texture. Um, but but we're we're seeing a lot more um, dark fruit and black fruit. Yeah, and really good. Again, the jalapeno, the that green bell pepper jumps out at me which to me with a good steak, a good piece of meat, or even like charred vegetables, um, you know, think about like a Greek food or like a charred, um, charred zucchini on the grill with this is just perfect. Yeah, I was thinking of like lamb kefta. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we got a nice spice mm. salad. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's kind of a, a something to call out as well. The wines are pretty much universal and very versatile when it comes yeah. to food pairing. Okay, we paired that so so we can like at the end of the flight. I, I figured it'd be nice to have with a second cheddar, which is all different. It's a more of a yellower cheddar than than the the feature that we had at the beginning. Uh, it's uh, it's closer to a jack and and um, it's made in in Utah, so it's a kind of different uh, area for cheese. Uh, there's a, a Creamery, they are called Beehive Creamery, and they do they do a bunch of different flavored uh, cheddar. This is one of them. This one is called Berry Buzz. Uh, the reason it's Buzz is because it's what the, the, the they wrap the cheese with a mixture of uh, lavender and espresso, and uh, so that, that so there would be the note of, of coffee, yeah. chocolate coffee kind of thing would be good, good with the wine. Uh, it's it's a nice way to finish the flight, and uh, like I said, it's made in in Utah. So it's a nice domestic product, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that. We have uh, we saw the almond in between, so you can enjoy that too. Um, and don't forget the little donuts yeah, too. We're just about done with everything. <laughs> 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 it's hard to wait sometimes. <laughs> it's all delicious. So it's, it's, I can understand, like, for sure. 
Anthony, what are you uh, what are you enjoying your wines with at your house? Uh, your company and and that's about <laughs> it. yeah. <laughs> I'm actually very surprised my dog is not. Uh, I was wondering why we haven't yeah. seen your dog yet. <laughs> Every time I do one of these, my dog makes an appearance and he's, he's being very, very well behaved. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't jinx it. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's uh, you know, the wines, and that's another thing about these wines is that they are, they are excellent with food, but I, I think they drink well on their own as well. Yeah. Like we agree. Um, we agree. So, uh, the whites obviously much more fresh mineral you know crisp uh when we get to the reds they're a little bigger they do see oak they are a little bit more on the bold side but to me i think Husine is just the perfect representation of chilean cab and carmenere uh, there's a small amount of carmenere in the blend and it's just a kind of a, a staple for chile but i think that there's a quality here and they've really with the past two vintages 2015 and 2016 we've really refined the herbal and um, kind of green notes where they're still very prevalent. They're there, but they're not taking over the, you know, the fruit. Yeah. Those are just like kind of real nice smooth tannin too. Very smooth tannins. They're smooth, they're fine, and they're, they're nice and silky. Like, when you were when you were talking, I had my mouth full of the wine, and you were talking about the mouthfeel of it, and I was trying to do this, like to explain, like that's exactly how it feels, like when it's going over your tongue, it's just very nice, like it's a welcoming right. feeling. It's just yeah, yeah, it's kind of velvety, like very velvety, it's and, very velvety. and to me, I think yeah, when, when we talk about comfort, when we talk about pairing these wines with food, I mean. It's the same thing to me with like New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and a lot of what's going on in California with Cabernet. I think that it's just too much fruit, too much citrus, too much red and bright. Right. Where when I'm eating, a, you know, whether it be a, a vegetarian meal or a piece of steak, I, I think that we want a little bit more refined fruit, integrated tannin, and and more velvet in the wine to to not take away from what we're enjoying. Agreed. And the Sauvignon is great. I mean, I love that asparagus flavor to it. Yeah. It'd be great with like the old Villa Scar they used to make in the 70s. <laughs> and, uh, that would and be. The asparagus and the Hollandaise. Well, you can just make it for us now in, you know, 2021. <laughs> yeah, that's just Bring it back. It's a small back. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> We can make all sorts of fun things. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But these are definitely, yeah, definitely do a, uh, not to call it out on air, but we should definitely do a, a formal wine dinner at Must Wine Loft when you when you we open will. the new yeah, yeah, when you open the new spot. Yeah. I'm ready to see Raymond's full potential. <laughs> well Raymond is retired, but he'll join us for events probably yeah. for these kinds of dinners because that's where he likes he likes to get back into the kitchen from time to time. Oh yeah, he's in the home. kitchen every day at home. But yeah, <laughs> what I mean for here, like he's yeah. not. You do not find Raymond here on a regular basis at Must working back in our kitchen. He is not a staple here at Must. He's so a celebrity celebrity appearance. You're not gonna find this guy here all the time. <laughs> yeah. He, you're, yeah, he's here for our show, and then other than that, he just he, he pops in whenever he's around because he, he, lives, he lives in the neighborhood, and yeah, and he has his things that he does very well that we love, and that we're not letting him go of doing because <laughs> fantastic, like pickling the vegetables. <laughs> the, uh, the celebrity we're, appearances from Raymond, <laughs> and then hopefully doing some grab walks soon too. So now that we're getting closer to like the fall yeah, the and fall winter, winter, which reminds me, I need to do this um, banner for next week. I already put it up once, but I'm just going to let everybody know we're not going to be here next Wednesday for flights. We are taking next week off because Labor Day is Monday and it's pretty slow usually Labor Day week and weekend because everyone gets out of town. We go to the beaches. We just don't really want to be holed up inside air conditioned places. Not that this isn't a great air conditioned place, but that's just the way that we are here in Florida. So 
Our summer hours are right there on your screen that you can see. We do, we are trying to start. It's kind of weird that we're launching it in September. However, I feel that launching in September will give us a good way to like work through our kinks the first month and then hopefully be able to continue on October, November, as season kind of like, as we get into season and pick up. We'll hopefully have like everything like worked out and like smooth sailing. So, because we get the keys for the next door spot in October, we're hoping to do our build out October, November, and we're hoping to be open right before Christmas at the end of the year. So, fingers crossed. We all know all of the sayings of, you know, tell God your plans till the universe tell a city. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we're just hoping. That, that's that's the track that we'd like to stay on, but you just we just don't know. So, but that's our game plan. And then we have some more fun announcements that we'll be finalizing, announcing the next time that we're live, which will be not next week. So I believe it's going to be the 13th then. September 13th will be our next flight. Yes. No, the 15th. The 15th. The 15th of September will be our next one. And then we'll be going, and we're going to have um, Todd here, and we're going to Spain. And so Todd went to Spain a couple months ago with the place that he worked for. Kind of like how you just, like, Anthony was telling me, this is why we did this tonight, was because he was like, we, I just had this awesome Zoom call with the winemaker from Harass to Perk, and we want to get, like, you were all fired up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're yeah, like, uh, focus on so yeah so that's why we do there's these nothing things. like being out in wine country and i think even like the folks at home enjoying this tonight or you know taking part in this with us there's nothing like being out in wine country and and how yeah. inspiring and influencing that you know it's it's a yeah. unique experience so right um that reminds me so when we do our november are we going to be at a pop-up or somewhere different so when we do our november we're going to be doing truffle week again with Brunozzo. Yeah. So yes. we are going to be probably doing it next door. Um, I don't know if it will be a private event or if it will be a public event. <laughs> because okay, it, will, cool. it will depend on if we have our license to be open yet and where we are in our construction. So okay. we'll see how that goes. Um, either way, we'll stream it, you know? Perfect. So, but yeah, that's kind of like how these things work, whether they're private or public mm -hmm. is really like what you can do um, yeah. what you can do legally with you know like understanding like you don't want to hurt anyone I don't we're not gonna invite anyone into a like a, a space that's under construction that's dangerous to be in you know like right. we won't do that we would rather like go someplace else or just film it here um, have a small especially with, especially with wine event. exactly exactly <laughs> so yeah so we like to get creative. Um, we work with a lot of different venues as well. We do a community spotlight um, where we work with local museums and nonprofit organizations. And we kind of, when we do that, we invade their space. We go and we literally bring our boxes of wine glasses and all of our boards and our stuff, our coolers, and we set up and we come in and they've, they've pretty much like got the tables and everything set up for our, for us and our, our participants. And everyone comes and they pick up their flights here at Must and they bring them there. Um, the people who are smart on this, in my opinion, also bring their picnic cooler with them so they can literally just put their bag in their cooler at their table and pull their wines out as we're going through everything. But that's kind of like what our community spot flights are, is our pop-ups. So if we need to do that for that event, we can do that. We have options. Great the fun of it and well, we, it. we like being creative so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do that. <laughs> yeah no one can have a bad time with uh with truffles and barolo so i think seriously truffles and wine I, I appreciate you guys having me on i hope everyone who's watching enjoyed it um True. and and i look forward to when we can do this again in person and uh and wine dinners in person so i hope wow. everyone enjoyed the delay wines and learned a little bit um the wines this evening and the cheese yeah yeah i'm gonna check and see if we have any more comments or questions yay harold thank 
you, by the way. Yes, so Harold and Felicia have been joining us and they said one year is strong of us enjoying your show from North Carolina. And we so appreciate that they've been doing the show from North Carolina with us. They discovered us through like missing going to their wine tastings in their hometown. And so thank you for joining us still. <laughs> we appreciate you cool. guys. And Anthony, we're, we're, we always enjoy you virtually. Or here in person. So, <laughs> thank you both. Thanks, everyone. I really appreciate all of your attention and uh, enjoy the wine. <laughs> yes, thank you. So, we'll see. We won't see you next week. We'll see you the following week. And I'm going to keep working on my homework of getting better at driving two cars at the same time. <laughs> see you later. Oh, Tom will be back soon, right? Huh? Tom will be back soon. Tom will be back. He will. He will not be in Vegas. I think. Yeah, this weekend. <laughs> we can't. We can't lose Tom to Vegas. We need. We need Tom back here. <laughs> we'll All be right. Back. Thank you both for having me, and thank you everyone at home. Thank you. Have a good Bye. weekend. Enjoy your Labor Day, and we'll see you next two weeks from now on the fifteenth. <laughs> <laughs> We're out.